So let's take a look at doing a chain link fence piece uh, nice and procedurally. So you can see that they overlap. They, they you know, essentially with a chain link fence, one of the pieces of wire follows all the way up and it weaves in and out of the others. So there's patterns that are being made here that we can work with. The pattern is actually just this. It is the world's simplest little spline. We're using an array modifier then a renderable spline to render it after the uh, fact, um, just so we can see it uh, you know, better. We could actually do it at the bottom here, but I like the renderable spline. And then the vertex weld to weld it together, which isn't ideal, but there is no spline vertex weld, uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, maybe we'll get that one day. So I'm just gonna turn the grid back on with G, and I'm just gonna go in and hide this off. Um, and then I'm going to go make uh, a section of this. So I'm going to use my snap, my 3D snap. It is currently, if you right click on it, it'll tell you it's uh, grid points. You can also um, uh, shift right click and get to your grid snap settings. So I want it on grid. That will be the default. Um, you can see that we've got, you know, uh, a grid snapping happening. I'm going to control right click to get to line or create, you know, shapes line. And I'm actually going to make more than I need. And you'll see why I do that in a second. So I'm actually going to start this way and I'm just going to click back and forward like that. So I actually want just this second section in here, but you'll see why in a second. So with this section, then we're going to uh, hit one on the keyboard to get into sub object vertex, you know, sub object vertex. I'm going to get rid of the snap just by hitting S again, or you can turn it off up here. Um, and I'm going to go control A and pick all of the knots or vertices. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say smooth. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say bezier. So they're all nice and bezier. Um, and that was just to make sure that I get these curves perfect to begin with. Um, and then we actually don't need the end ones. So we don't need these pieces, but it was just to get these pieces um, set up correctly. So let's go ahead now and actually add the array modifier and you'll be able to see it kind of build itself as we go. So I'm going to hit X and start typing in array. We want the array modifier or again, you can go up to the modifier list and start looking for the array modifier or start typing for it. Now to get this pattern to work, I'm going to actually just go and make a couple this way. You can see it's already, um, you know, fitting together. As I said, those each one needs to um, wind itself together. I'm going to go into the local rotation and say alternating and take the uh, alternator um, value in Z. And I'm going to uh, call it 180 degrees so that they alternate. And you'll see now they're alternating and flipping over. Um, and then to be able to make this, um, you know, fit better, uh, it looks like the pivot uh, is the is kind of the issue. The pivot doesn't look like it's in the middle of the object. Um, so we could uh, try moving the pivot, but unfortunately, array doesn't update with that uh, bit of information um, to center this out. So what we can do instead of doing that, believe it or not, is hit three and uh, at, down at the bottom. So uh, sorry, uh, sub object. And we'll, we'll work it from there so that we get it. So you can see that pivot isn't in the right spot. So I'm just going to kind of guess it over a little bit right now and try that and turn it off. You can see it's pretty darn close now. So that's not bad. Um, show end result, alt tilt again so we can see it uh, kind of coming together. And the reason I did that is it just makes it easier to fit them together. Now we could actually even move it around with the show end result on and try and get those ends to start lining up and get everything to line up. So that's one way to do it is just have it sh uh, showing. Uh, and you can see that these all points all come together. Now you can say, well, it no longer goes and connects all the way up. So in the array uh, modifier again, uh, we can do an offset here. So I'm going to take it and do an offset and we're going to say alternating. So the alternating rows and we can offset it in a given axis. So I can offset it over until it fits back together again and starts producing what we're expecting. So you'll see it's starting to create that pattern we're looking for. 
Um, I'm just going to make it a little bigger so we can see a bit more of it. So it's starting to look pretty good. Now we need some overlap on it. So I'm going to take the uh, offset down here to make sure these overlap, which of course is going to break the uh, continuation up. So I'm going to have to then go in and play with the offset again to make sure they line back up again and it all lines up as it should. So as it lines up, um, let's take a look at what it looks like at the top of the stack. And I'm going to use, you know, we can put renderable at the bottom, but another way to use, uh, do this is X um, was with the renderable spline modifier, or we can use other ones as well. We could use um, uh, different modifiers to be able to get this to work, but this works just fine. Now I've got it set to six right now. If it's set to 12, it'll look all around. We don't need that many polygons in it. There's just no need. So I'm gonna set it to six, but you'll notice it no longer looks smooth. That's gonna be our auto smooth to a given angle. Let's just crank that up to 180 degrees so we know it's always auto smoothing. Now, we also don't need ends. You're gonna see where it needs to weld together. We don't need the interior end. So I'm gonna turn off cap so that's not capping. And now we have to make it so that it looks like it is twisting together. So back down to the uh, vertex level at the bottom, I'm gonna grab this vertex first. And if you remember, it does have a bezier handle on it and it needs to have that bezzy handle to be able to do this. Uh, I'm going to turn on angle snap with A, just so I sort of know how much I snap it. And so you can see it's starting to fit together when I do that. And I'm going to then go and take these ends and do them the uh, this one the opposite way. And then I think I got to go one more there. And then I'm going to do this one that way. And so now you see that it is all starting to fit together and connect together nicely. And then above the top of the stack, so I'm gonna turn off sub object here, right to the top. And unfortunately there is no um, spline weld modifier. That would be uh, the, uh, the, the ideal situation, but we're gonna use the um, vertex weld modifier. And it's not going to be ideal, but it should be able to get it to, to weld together. Now, unfortunately, it's going to weld stuff that we don't necessarily want to have welded. But are we going to see it anyways at this point? So now we can go to the array modifier and decide how big we want this. So I'm going to cover the area that we're going to want, let's say, and spread this out. Now, what you may end up with is a bunch of extra things sticking out. And you say, well, I want this up against a pole or something, and I don't want to see those. We could manually put, um, you, know, an, uh, you know, an editable poly modifier on top uh, and, and start uh, working with it and, uh, um, you know, deleting the outside edges, just these outside element pieces that we don't or whatever it might be. Or we can actually go with another um, sort of, you know, quick solution that is going to be a little more flexible. And I'm going to add a modifier called Slice. And Slice comes in and you can see it's adding the uh, gizmo. So it's under here, under the Slice plane. And it's adding it um, over where the pivot is. It doesn't really matter um, the uh, how big this gizmo is, but it does matter uh, where it's going to be. You'll see in a second. I have my angle snapped on. And I'm going to angle snap to you know 90 degrees and get it snapped up here. And I may as well just move it so it makes more sense. There you go. That won't matter actually. You'll see. And I'm going to try remove positive or remove negative. And now you'll see that it is uh, removing the uh, the outside edge. So I can just go in and clip off what I don't want if I'm not going to see it. Not a perfect solution, but it's close enough. I'm going to do it to the other side. So I'm going to take the modifier, right click, copy, right click, paste. I'm going to um, again go into the sub object with one. I'm going to slide it all the way across, but just flip it over to remove positive. And now I can remove the other side and set that to wherever I want. And now you have this chunk of, of uh, you know, chain link fence that you can uh, you know place or uh, if it's the right size so if you decide that you want it wider you're going to find that of course now it's not going to look like anything because our slice planes are now 
uh, slicing it off in a specific spot. So you'd have to make it larger and then slice it to where you want. You could just potentially make it much bigger and then slice it down to the size you want. But of course, then it's actually generating a pile of geometry and then having to delete a pile of geometry. So it could be slowing things down a little bit. But there you go. There's a chain link fence piece. Now, you could also uh, do some deformation on this if you wanted it to fit you know around something or look like it's bent and the easiest way to probably do that is with ffd modifiers so if we scroll on down you'll see there's several ffd modifiers uh two by two three by three four by four which are kind of fixed numbers of points and you'll see what i mean when i go to box and what the box is going to give us if i go into again sub object control points one on the keyboard I can go in and I can grab those points and I can manipulate them and flex it around. Um, now, uh, we don't need the amount of segments up and down. We don't need all those. So we can go and say the height down to two. So you can see that there's no more in there. And we could also go and set it to have more on the other axes if we feel the need. And now we've got more control points. Note, once you've deformed it, so if you go into your control points and deform it and then decide to change the number of points, it will reset it because it won't know what um, has been bent. So now you can easily kind of go in and mash this around and make it look like it's bent a little bit, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, kind of make it look a little more interesting if it's got to be worn out. Um, if you wanted, you could even take the amount of points uh, down to two and two, or sorry, we'll do it uh, three and three at the top. And we'll just grab the top and we'll pull it up. Now, there is some odd problems with the FFD box that need to be corrected. You can see that it is doing this weird stretchy thing coming out. I'm going to remove this. If we need something that simple, I find that the FFD box uh, you know, something like three by three by three is going to work better for us. It's not going to have that strange deformation going on. And so we can go in and flex that and flex it if we wanted to curve over a surface or something and even round it out more. I don't know, whatever you wanted to do. So it'll allow us to be able to control the surface fairly nicely and be able to get something that we could use in maybe a curved surface or something if we wanted it to be. Other ways of doing that as well, but that one certainly works well.